who has a good joke maybe to fill up the time Lewis a good joke maybe uh, a good joke really yeah all really right. <laughs> that's, that's that's already stop. a good okay. one <laughs> uh, stop, stop maybe you heard this one my ex my ex-wife still misses me but her aim is getting better yeah what yeah, the? My, my, <laughs> My ex, my ex wife still misses me, but her aim is getting better. See, <laughs> you heard that one. It's it, it's funny because marriage is terrible. OK, I'm sorry. Why? 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 Mark is laughing a lot. Ex wife jokes. Yeah, because it's actually hilarious if you really yeah. think of it. Uh, yeah. OK, OK, good one. Mark, <laughs> okay. something, something similar. I can't, I can't feel that. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. My hat is off to you, Louise. That was great. Right. <laughs> okay, so now we're getting, uh, we're getting, let's uh, see, people are arriving. So um, we have a few faces here, a few new faces here, um, which we talked, for example, with Max uh, the other day. He joined uh, on Thursday, as I remember, Artemy was there as well. Um, Rob, good, good morning. Good morning, Rob. Uh, we haven't met yet, so may I ask a few things from you? Um, have you started teaching with Oxinity? Your microphone is muted. OK, sorry about that. Can you hear me? No worries. Yeah, perfectly loud and clear. Um, I've done a trial lesson and that's it, really. <laughs> OK, how did you feel about it? I enjoyed it. it. It went fairly well. Luckily, I only had one student, so the stress wasn't too high. <laughs> Have you thought before? I have taught before. It's um, mostly Chinese and mostly children. So it's a bit of a, a change to, to teach adults. Uh -huh. OK, all right, all right. And and is teaching your background or did you do something different before uh, uh, embarking uh, on the journey of education? My, um, yeah, my background is actually engineering. And then after okay. that, uh, business, uh, business analysis. And then after that, a little bit of programming. So I'm moving around. Okay, okay, that's uh, that's good. It's, it it uh, it uh, it keeps you interested, right? To <laughs> doing doing uh, doing yeah. several things, or, or yeah. doing doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And why teaching, if I may ask? What brought you um, to education? Well, I, I, I'm I'm enjoying working from home and kind of being a bit more of my own uh -huh. boss. Um, and it it is can be fairly steady. A source of income and um and when i was a student i i kind of discovered that um the best way to understand something is really to teach myself and i th i think i kind of quite enjoyed teaching myself so when i've been teaching the the chinese students i've actually quite enjoyed teaching and um you know if i can explain something to myself i can explain it to someone else although language is a little bit different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Chinese Chinese kids and teens, you you taught English to them, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, online, or did you did you did you give in person classes as well? All all online. All online. All online. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would you like to yeah. try in person classes? Um, from South Africa, a bit tricky, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, yeah, but, first, uh, China, they're fair enough. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Um, yeah, but I don't think I'd mind, yeah, I, you know, if it was a possibility. What would be different, in your opinion? It, it, in person or online? Yeah, yeah, what would be the... Yeah, what, well, I, well, I, I suppose... What are the key differences? The, the, well, the in-person experience is a lot more immersive. You can see a lot more body action, and I mean, it's just a, it's a whole different feel having someone there in the room you do your best facial expressions etc on online but it's a bit tri tricky to to really match in person mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and yeah. regard regarding teaching style or what what uh, or, or yeah 
teaching style or or, or using of using of uh, uh, exercises would it be really different what do you think uh, in person um, and online sure. yeah I, I don't i don't really think so um mm. I think it will be pretty much the same. Um, okay. Um, I, I, you know, although they're only looking at your face, whereas you, you know you've got more sort of um, body language if you're in person. So mm -hmm. one has to control control more of yourself and make sure you're giving the right message with your whole body, not just your face. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can you can't hide behind the uh, behind the desk, right? That's uh, that's that's through uh, Not the really. No. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Thank you very much, Rob. Welcome. Okay. Here. <clears throat> Welcome nice to, to meet you. All. Thank you. Um, so um, let's let's start to talk uh, a little bit about about how do we conduct our classes uh, before we before we talk um, about about activities. Um, I'm sorry. I need to I need to interrupt myself because I see now that there are two others other other teachers who joined us and they are new Alistair Lane and Alison Jack J Jacobs Jacobs uh, can you speak Alistair can you hear us can you come to the micro oh. yes yes I can hear I can hear you all loud and clear okay very good very good you are Alison if I'm not mistaken right Alistair yeah 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 okay okay um Alistair, uh, could you please tell us a few similar words like Robert uh, about yourself? Mm -hmm. uh, well, like him, I also live here in South Africa um, and I'm originally from, from the UK. I've had a few years of online teaching experience, mostly Asian, Asian companies, um, like a Chinese company beforehand where it was kids, uh, young kids, like four to about 12 13 and then i moved over to a japanese company where that sort of ranged from all all sorts from kids to adults and there they used more freeform conversation they wanted conversation skills and as well as business etiquette so yeah so i'm used to the online format more than anything else Mm -hmm. And business etiquette, for example, uh, does that fit to your to your uh, form into your former profession, or there to to your to your, to your studies, for example? Is it, was it something um, new for you? It was new for me. It was new for me because I studied archaeology and psychology, so <laughs> nowhere near economics or business. Uh, so it was new to get used to. But it was very for those sort of classes. It was very formatted, so it was very easy to just follow through the steps, and that. Uh, with them so like try and trying yeah. to explain to somebody there's a difference between being polite and rude in a conversation as as well as in business you there's there's a bit more error to be abrupt in a business sort of situation they so like sort of teaching the, especially the Japanese they're, they're very they're very um, formal on that side of it <laughs> yeah and if I understand it well the uh, in at least in this, the, the, on the platform with the, for, uh, for Japanese people, you received the material before the class. So um, you, you, you were given the material to teach, right? Within the class, within it. So you, your preparation, there was no way to actually prepare. Uh, you'd go in, the, the student would choose the topic. So it would be something like daily news where we'd read through an article together and discuss it. Or they would have free conversation where you really are just talking for about 25 minutes with the individual, trying to get them to talk as much as possible. And that. so that's, yeah, where with Ooh. the Chinese company, that was very structured. That was, you got the materials beforehand, you know, like a week in advance, you'd be able to, to go through it and, and sort of prep it. Okay. Okay. And how did you find uh, working like this? I mean, like, like really jumping into the middle of it and then, and then um, in in some ways it was it was quite exciting like the free conversation was fine because um they're a nation that likes to travel so there, there was always markers to sort of touch on with with an individual uh, when it came to the stuff they've chosen you you're trying to you're trying to gauge their level and that and sometimes they've chosen something that's above their level so you're sort of simplifying it 
for them as well. So it was it was interesting. It it made it yeah you know, like exciting in the sense of you don't know what you're getting until until you're a minute in, and that's where the other one was a lot more more structured. So you knew exactly what what you're coming in for. Yeah, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. And these classes uh, with the with the Japanese people as last question were these 25, 30 minutes classes? If I if I'm 25. not mistaken. They, 25. they could choose it was 25 with the longer ones and then they they sort of added in 10 minutes and 15 minute ones uh, you'd have sometimes you'd have somebody walking from the train station home and they would do a lesson on their phone like that and just just converse with you they just want to talk they want to practice but, uh, okay micro learning kind of mm, kind of, yes, kind of. Yes. okay okay interesting interesting thank you very much alistair welcome pleasure, to oxymity Thank you very much. Thank you. Alison, good morning to you as well. Hi. Good morning. Hi, everyone. I'm well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not not bad. Thanks for asking. Um, Alison, uh, I, I think you have taught already with Oxinity, right? A few classes. Um, I just had my trial um, yesterday, so that was okay. the only lesson that I've done. And how was that? Um, it was good. It just took me a second to just get used to the new interface. Um, but mm -hmm. I think you face that with any teaching company. Um, but yeah, it was really good. Um, the student was very nice. Um, the lessons were, you know, quick for me to, um, but at least I also had a practice run before. So I did see some of the material and that also helped a lot. So yeah, I think overall it went really well. Mm -hmm. And how did you find it working with the interface? Um, the interface is pretty uh, easy to work with, um, pretty easy to understand. Um, I also like that uh, you can see what the students see and then also um, go to the teacher's interface where um, you have the questions and things that you need to ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for in, for example, for you to, to switch between the two in in the during the class in the classroom, how how easy do you find that part right like you are looking at the students you are looking at the the the, the attachment what you share with the students and to 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 go and check the questions how how did you find that part um, I found it pretty easy um, just because I have been teaching online for a while. And I think okay. for anyone who's been teaching online, like when you teach, you know that you probably have more than one window open at a time. So it just becomes a really natural thing where it, the transition is very easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. OK, that's really good to hear. And uh, so you said that that uh, you've been teaching online for some time already. Did you teach before that as well? Or, um, or? No. No, so I used to do um, like tutoring for kids um, at an orphanage uh, in my area, um, but that was that was it. It was really just tutoring and it was me just giving my time. So it also wasn't something I was paid for. I would just go and help and that would be a part of my community service or how I contribute to my community. Um, but then like five years ago, six years ago, I started teaching online. English only. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, all right, super. Thank you, Alison. Welcome to Oxinity as Thank well. Thank you. Mm, so uh, it was really nice to hear these uh, these uh, short introductions of our new teachers and future partners. Now, uh, before we turn our um, our attention uh, to to the activities uh, themselves i'd like to i'd like us to talk a few minutes about about what shouldn't we teachers do in in oxinity classes so i think there are a few things uh, mm, but not just oxinity classes i think in in general when you are doing when you are doing an online class um any suggestions anyone what things what things shouldn't we do as teachers in a in an online or in an in person classroom nothing can do everything Lewis? <laughs> uh, no no small talk right 
No, no, no small work. talk. Okay, yeah, that's 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 a really good point. What do we do instead of a small talk to help the new teachers, Louis? Uh, with uh, every well, everything we say should have a purpose, right? Even even if you every um you you can well you can you can ask the students about you know like how 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 are you? Good morning. But you you should avoid small talk as much as possible, right? Yeah, and what on, do we do on, instead? On, uh, you should try to you try and try and bring up uh, uh, um, or try to talk about something that's relevant to the lesson, right? Mm -hmm. And okay. even even if even if even if it sounds like small talk, it it really isn't, right? Yeah. Okay. Good point, Tony. Is it quick questions you're looking for? I actually that that was that was that was the 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 answer yeah yeah if I may be more uh, really specifically yes so these are the kind of yes no questions what we ask from from our students at the very beginning of the class to avoid this small talk and to bring uh, re some relevance into the questions right little bit of grammar practice and so on and so on yes thank you thank you Tony Zoe you wanted to add something as well. Yeah, I'm not very good with this hand. I keep on doing it three times. Um, I was going to say exactly the same. I was going to endorse what Tony said, but also stay away <laughs> from taboo subjects. You've got to be neutral. Um, don't deviate mm, from, yes. you've only got half an hour, so don't deviate from what you're there to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's 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 actually actually a really important thing i didn't even write this down for myself that yeah some some top that's a, so the hot potato kind of topics like let's try to avoid those because because some people might get offended right and we don't want anyone to get to get offended uh, in a classroom uh, okay very good what else really think about behavior Chris, good morning. Good morning. You have your hands raised. <clears throat> yeah. Um, allowing students to Google like direct translations during class. Okay. Okay. So that's that's that. Yeah. Um. Mm, yeah. Okay. That's 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 not about that's not about behavior, but yes, it's it's best to avoid this this as well uh why should we avoid this chris why do you think it's not it's not a good practice well if they're having a conversation with someone in real life they won't they won't be doing that so uh-huh uh -huh. okay okay yeah 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 fair enough yeah yeah really good really good thank you chris okay so no 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 Goog no googling unless Unless we do have some exercises where we actually ask students to to use a search engine to to quickly find some 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 information, but yes. Mm. And besides this, what else would you add if you if they really really don't understand something or or can't 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 find the the the, the they they don't they can't understand the words. And they they want to use their phone instead of giving them translation. What what's important with this uh, with this Google topic, Mark? Yeah, just using um, cognates. You know, if you know Spanish, for example, you know, using Latin-based words rather than phrasal verbs, yeah, rather than yeah. actually, yeah. you know, I mean, no translating, <laughs> but it's like a hint, isn't it, really? Yeah, but and it's and it works pretty well, right? Especially with Spanish learners, but I think many many others as well. Okay, Josie, what would be your? Yeah, I think for I think yeah, because cognates and stuff for uh, lower level learners definitely maybe synonyms, but for higher level, I like because sometimes I see them going to type, and I'm like, no, 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 don't translate it. Give me like an example. Give me a situation like for the word that you're trying to find. And then it helped them. And I think that just it helps it stick better than if they're just directly translating it all the time. Yeah. And yeah, and this is this is this is what I was trying to get get to like what Josie said is that don't don't translate. Try to find a definition. 
try to find a cognate, right? Don't don't translate to your own language because that hinders the progress of learning. But if you if you go for a definition, if you look for example sentences, right? <coughs> in which context are these used? Then then it it will it will uh, it will settle easier. Or yeah, I think. Yes, sorry, you wanted to say um, something. Yeah, hi, morning. I was going to say in the group class, make sure everybody gets a chance to talk and that, like we were saying last week, one person doesn't take over the conversation because they're all are there to learn and practice speaking as well. And obviously make sure everyone gets their part and don't also maybe interrupt sometimes. It's very hard, isn't it, when you've heard a mistake and you think, are you going to stop the flow or let them continue making the mistake? You have to really make that judgment. Um, yeah. And, and it's not always easy, right? To to yeah. to really to really get uh, when when to correct, when not to correct. Uh, do I need to correct this pronunciation uh, um, while we are practicing grammar? So, yeah, this is this is an important part as well. Okay, other things. Behavior of the teacher. I was let let me try to let me try to be a little more specific. As a teacher, what shouldn't we do? What things are not really adequate to do? In no swear words. Okay, right. No cursing, of course. I think that's 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 kind that's so this might be so obvious that it it does not even worth to mention. But now it's out in the air. Tony, what else? Things like eating and drinking don't look very professional. <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's it's similar. It's similar to to the to the curse words. It's it's so obvious. I think that it, it did not even cross my mind. But yeah, thanks, Tony, because it's also very important. If you have a glass of water or a bottle of water next to you, I think that's that's completely okay. But with a pint of beer, perhaps it's a little. I mean, like it's it's kind of, it's not going to work. Um, okay, what else? Sarah, good morning. Sarah, we can't hear you. The microphone is muted. Sorry, good morning, everyone. Hi. Try not to, well, no, don't talk too much. It's the student's opportunity to talk, not the teacher's. So I also find sometimes students want to know more about the teacher and you really have to encourage them not to you know it's not about your you it's about the students so. yeah that's yeah exactly so this is really connected to what you said it's, it's not just that you are giving uh, the same amount of time to each students but make sure that it's the students who talk not you not you as a teacher and and but if they want to find out more about you, then 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 and then tell them to ask questions, you know. And if they absolutely, ask absolutely. the right questions, if they ask questions correctly, then it's then it's perfectly okay if you if you answer with a short, simple sentences. But it's not like you are going to start the monologue about uh, about your uh, your life or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, good. What else? Oh, don't be late. So, <laughs> ow. Yeah, yeah. Good timekeeping. Being being punctual. I think that's a super important thing. Really, really, really important. Um, yeah, it's it, it's just lame. Uh, really, I think it's lame when you are like, oh, sorry for letting you wait. You know, it's like two, it's two minutes past from the class. You're still wiping your mouth or I don't know what. And it's like, no, 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 it's not really professional. Alistair, you wanted to add something. Um, I'd say don't show frustration or like exasperation about something. Like if the student isn't getting it, you know, it makes them feel stupid. It'll make them feel foolish and, and you don't want that either. Yeah, that's a super important point. Yes, don't don't get angry, don't get nervous, don't get anxious. 
or even if you get don't show it to the students i think when it comes when it comes to when it comes to the to the to the online classes we have a we have a huge advantage in the online classes because in person classes to really to really hold this kind of uh, tension that's inside back it's very very difficult uh, two years ago i went to teach kids in summer camps in belgium and i was struggling a lot with this you never taught before in, with with kids and suddenly i was there with 20 25 kids in a classroom and i was like mm-hmm. okay what's going on so it's and and it's really hard not to not to not not, not to show this this kind of uh, nervousness right and they are kids so they're gonna eat you if they see that okay it's not working uh mark you also wanted to say something yeah, I was just going to say the same thing, being patient with students, you know, you've got to be mm-hmm. patient with their, you know, lack of uh, understanding or something like that, you know, just uh, might take them a little longer to get a point, hopefully. Yeah. And it's our job to help them to get to that point. Yeah, that's 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 the thing. That's that's what we that's what we sign up for. And that's what we get paid for in the end. Uh, OK, mm. so. Uh, because we are almost at, at at half, I'd like to 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 point out three things. Uh, th- uh, three things. Uh, firstly, uh, about about behavior, or it's kind of like courtesy. So try to try to silence your phone when you are teaching a class. So. When, 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 when there is, when, when, when you are, when you are in a conversation on WhatsApp or, or whatever with a friend just before the class, and then you keep on receiving messages from your friend in that classroom, that's really not nice. And in this, and in this context, I think there is no difference between a digital and an in-person classroom. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's just not, it's unprofessional. Uh, really, and imagine yourself sitting sitting somewhere with your friend having a talk, and your phone go, go like goes buzzing all the time. Your friend's going to get even like 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 you know it's 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 just it's just something that. So please 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 turn your turn your turn your turn the turn the sound off on your phone, and if you can even the uh, even the vibration or not. Like, don't allow your students hear that, because we get complaints for that. To be honest, and that's something that these are in the end okay. The, they are students. We help them, but we need to remember that these people are paying clients, and they are paying for a service. They are paying for an experience, and. And and we would like to keep them as long as possible and to provide them the best service which we can. So this is something to I I, I kindly ask you to pay attention to, please. And related to this, another thing because this also happens from time to time. Uh, we have a we have we are we are teaching we are using an online. Oh sorry, Rob, you wanted to say something because connected to this. Yeah, sorry. It was um, it's it's probably not that relevant with um with adults, but sometimes the children that I taught were very tired, and they'd start yawning, and it's really contagious, and you actually <laughs> kind of want to yawn back. So to to hide a voluntary yawn away is quite tricky. You know, it's a involuntary yawn. Sorry. Um, you do. Certainly no yawning. I'd, no, I'd say no yawning. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> that's 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 an that's an interesting one there because it's it's kind of like an involuntary reflex, yeah. So it's very hard yeah. to 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 but you can you move out of the camera if you really want to, perhaps for a second, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So so turning turning the sound off on your phone, and. Um, Connected to this, we have we have a we have an online platform, and yes, this platform works on our phones as well. And yes, our students do connect to our classes from their phones. I don't like it to be honest, and I think it's disrespectful with the rest of the students, especially when they are moving around at home, doing the laundry in the meantime and other stuff. You know, it's but but they are the playing paying clients, but we are the providers, so. 
another thing I like to kindly ask you not to do is teaching from your phone because even though even though the application does work on the phone you are not going to be able to provide the best service which we can so sometimes sometimes there's a there's a power outage internet is down laptop is broken i don't know what's happening happened with me as well several times especially last summer and then you need to cancel the class and i know that it's it's it sucks, excuse my French, it does because you lose money, but you need to do it because we are providing service to our clients and our service is provided from a laptop, not from a phone. Whatever iPhone or whichever phone you have, you are not going to be able to provide the, the, the same service. And also the students do see that you are on a phone. Right, because because as as we see them as well when they are on the phone, they also see that you are on the phone, and imagine them that hey, I paid seven euros for this class, and and this damn guy is coming from a phone from the garden. Like, what am I paying for? Imagine yourself. Would you like to pay seven euros for a class which is taught from a garden on a phone? Right. So, it's I think. Unfortunate, but I had to, I had to, had to address these two things today because, because, because the, there are there are some messages and complaints from students uh, regarding these regarding these things, and 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 it's in the end it, it's it leads to losing losing clients, which we which we don't want, and also it it's 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 not going to help anyone grow so imagine imagine now just just because mark is in the middle and sarah is is above that imagine that uh, sarah has a client mark is teaching the client from the terrace in sevilla with a phone right so if 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 this if this client is of sarah is is dissatisfied then that client is not going to tell to a friend that hey there's a super nice platform with super nice teachers, really good, really good, really good content. Come learn English, learn French, learn Spanish, learn German with us. We can't expand this way. And this is this is a really important thing to keep in mind that it's it has it has really, really, really long going effect when we are not providing a good service. Mm -hmm. OK, so. That was the that was the bad stuff to talk about today. I hope I hope it's I I I don't know. Is there is there anyone who who does not agree with with these thoughts? Is there anyone who thinks that it's okay to teach from phone? Of course, no one's going to say yes after all this. But 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 uh, just please think about it a little bit. Like what what would what would you feel if a client of yours came to you that hey. Today in my class, uh, I was constantly I, I heard the, the the messenger and the and the and the WhatsApp going on and on of the, from the teacher's phone or the teacher connected from a from a from a from a, 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 a mobile, right? So it we need to we need to remember that <clears throat> that <clears throat> often that <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> Gergo, you're muted. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Because I was, yeah, yeah, I had to scratch my throat. So thank you, Maria. So we need to remember that that oftentimes we are teaching each other's clients. So we have this responsibility towards each other. We are taking care of the businesses of each other. And that's that's why I think it's it's really important to to adhere to these very, very basic uh, rules. You know, I think we can't even say rules. It's courtesy towards towards the clients. Rob, you <coughs> wanted to say something more? No, your your hands no, are I, still I, raised. I, okay, I, I don't no know. I, I don't know why it's still raised. You can get rid of it. I, you have to no, click on the raise button and then it's going to, get to rid of it. Thank, go away. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank, uh, uh, it's gone. Jonathan, what about yeah, you? Yeah, so sorry I cannot use the uh, camera, but I would like to say something about um, it's 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 a service, right? So we want to give a good service, 
I think the phone and paying attention to the students this has to be a must, right? So we have to go for it. So please don't use phones while while giving classes. I mean, it's common sense for all. I mean, if you're expecting some important message or whatever, it's it's I understand. But otherwise, please pay attention on the student. And the second thing that you said, I mean, uh, giving classes from a garden. Actually, I would like to to be given uh, classes from garden. The only thing is, again, service. OK, so it has to be a good quality service. So if you can provide good quality service while doing classes on the beach or in the garden or whatever, it's fine. But the problem if it's too noisy or it keeps on like breaking and stuff like that, please avoid that, right? But if you are having fun skiing in a really place, nice resort, and you want to give classes from there, wow, amazing. Please take photos and then we can share it on social media because that's going to be amazing. But it has to be good quality, all right? So always think about the student and that's it. That's what I wanted to say. Cheers, man. Thank, thank, thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, so, okay. Not, it's... The problem is not the garden. The problem is the mobile phone, right? So if you if you have your if you have your, your laptop with really good internet, just uh, just like Jonathan Jonathan said, a good headset with with noise filtering, right? You can be in the middle of an airport or Grand Central. You can give a class, right? Of course, but but yes, please 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 consider these consider that you are you are providing a service, Josie, please. Yeah, no, it's just uh, on that. Yeah, because I think, you know, if your teacher's got a lovely background, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. Um, but I just think, you know, think about what you would want if you were paying for a service or if you were paying for a class with someone, what would annoy you or put you off learning? And that's what you need to think about. So exactly all the things that we've covered already, but I think that's a good mindset to have. And, and and related to this, I mean, like, yeah, garden around fun and so on and so on. But imagine, imagine those people who connect to our classes from the office, right? It's Thursday afternoon, two o'clock. Guys are sweating in the in the in in, in, in uh, right at work and so on and so on. And then you are like, like from the garden giving a class. I mean, it's not. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's it depends. If you have a private class with someone, okay, that might that might be different. But with the open web class system, it's a little it's a little tricky, because people are coming from from various backgrounds and and various situations, and and they might find it a little disrespectful. I don't know. It's just it's just just a thought. Okay, um, anything else about this? Anyone? Anything we what we shouldn't do in class? No eating, uh, no trash talk. Be patient. Let the students speak. Don't use your phone. Don't teach from a phone. Mm. Okay, then <clears throat> one last thing about about uh, teaching oxygenity class or teaching classes. I think in general. Um, <clears throat> oof. Um, we have a chat box and the chat box is a wonderful tool because we can communicate in writing with the students and also the students can write to us, but, but it's, it's an aid. It's, it's a help. We use it when we need it. It's not there to communicate constantly with the students. Don't, don't put every sentence into the chat box because then the it's easier to read than to listen to the to, to the teacher and if they read they are not listening and our 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 approach is about listening they should listen to the words of the teachers not read the words of the teachers <coughs> it's we also tell we also tell our students that they can meet and practice with various accents. Mm -hmm. But what what good the accent is for if we are writing everything down, they are not going to pay it. They are not going to practice comprehending the different 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 um, uh, uh, um, accents or, or 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 ways of expressing people themselves because they are just going to read because it's easier and because we are people and we are all lazy. 
if it's easy, we are going to do that, right? There are, of, of course, there are some few, there are few people who don't, but but the majority will do, and we need to avoid that. We really need to avoid that. So please, <clears throat> sorry, so please choose the, or use the chat box accordingly. Use the chat box when they, when they do not understand your question for the third time, right? Especially with low levels, of course, we already with the quick questions, we need to, we need to use the chat box because they, they can't make a difference between where and where, and then you need to type it down for them to, to make them understand that it's not, it's not, it's not where, it's where, where, where are you working, blah, 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 whatever, right? So these are simple things, and that's why the chat, chat box is a very useful tool, but it's a tool to be used. It's not the way how we teach the classes. Otherwise, we could teach classes with the phone, with the WhatsApp, and then it's then 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 it's, then it's like that. So good. Now, um, anything else? Anyone about do's and don'ts of digital digital classrooms? Yadi, good morning. I think you're muted. Yes, yeah, sorry, muted, sorry. Uh, sorry, I was late, I was just in a class, um, but just on the whole using the chat box, I just, uh, I picked up somewhere in our discussions, one of our discussions along the way that, because um, I was using the chat box, if the student didn't know what I was saying, they would, then I would just copy and paste the question in the chat box and then, Pick, picked up somewhere in our discussions that we shouldn't, obviously, because they need to be get used to hearing and listening. Uh, but there was an exception for S1 and P2 students um, because they're still learning to listen. So to use the chat box to clarify what you're trying to say and communicate, um, but then not to use the chat box for that purpose uh, above or P3 and above, because um, that, by that time they should be be able to listen and understand instructions. Um, it is the, the it is it is <coughs> it is the it is the decision of the teacher, of course. At each yeah, and every, yeah. every class, every class is different in this sense, and mm. even students might have better and worse days, right? Sometimes they understand, sometimes they don't understand. So we we help them, but that's the thing. We that's a help. It's not the way we teach. Yeah, Kaylee, very important. And of course, with low levels, we use it much more frequently because because they need the constant support. Yeah, yeah, okay. Jon Jonathan, you want to add something here? Yes, uh, regarding the S1s and low levels using the chat, the problem that we have is that with English, sometimes what you read is not the way you pronounce it, right? So be careful because uh, sometimes we might think that by using the chat box we can go and and explain better and easier things and they can understand but the problem is that once they start reading they will learn it in a different way and they will start producing that uh wrong so be careful very much with using chat box to go and explain things with particularly low levels, OK? So with high levels, it's not a problem, but using it for, for low levels, I know it's it's kind of maybe a discrepancy here, So, but, but believe me, try to give as much um, speaking to low levels, although you have to explain it again and again until they can just pronounce it, and then that's it, OK? Because once they start reading, they go backwards, OK? So just be careful with that. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan. I have a, um, uh, sorry, ahead. just to butt in. I have a question because um, I, w I had I had words on the screen, so not in the chat. It was part of the actual material, um, and um, I was asking the student to repeat the word after me, and I was trying to say it as clear as possible, but they couldn't see the words in the material, and then and they weren't pronouncing it properly. But as soon as they scrolled down and they saw the words, all of a sudden they were pronouncing it right. So like, I don't know if, if it was something to do with the connection or what, or if there's any tips 
that someone can give me. I don't know. Um, and that, that, was it a low level class? Nah, I think it was maybe probably P3, maybe. Yeah, it was actually the letter the P3, Y. Yeah, P3, when they read it, then they can go for it probably. But yeah. the problem is with an S1. For instance, imagine that you're trying yeah. to explain the word weird. All right. Yeah. So once they read that, they're going to be pronouncing it in a completely different way. Or even Wired. what we always say. Yeah, you say comfortable, right? So they can say mm. comfortable. OK, that's fine. Yeah. Once they start reading comfortable, they will start yeah. reading it this way. All right. So you don't want that. So that's yeah. why it's just be careful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a very thin very line. Weird. Mm. Yeah, very weird. I think it's a thin line, right? Because 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 on one on one hand, yes, we want them to learn the good pronunciation, but uh, yeah, some 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 sometimes we need to we need to use writing to make them to make them understand what 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 we are saying. So if they understand, if they do not understand what we are saying, then they are not going to repeat. I had this problem with the, with this S1 student a couple of weeks ago that she literally, she she didn't know anything in English. Yes, no, that was all. That was all. And, and, and the simplest question, like, or the sentence that I am Gerge, you are Susanna, and she was like, you are Susanna, I am Gerg. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 it's actually the other way around, you know, like, and it's, it really took a long time to, so sometimes, sometimes writing might help, but definitely not with pronunciation in English. Definitely not. Okay, now it's 12 minutes to 12 and the whole uh, conversation went in a way that I did not expect. I really thought that we are going to talk for five minutes about what to do and what not to do in classes, and then it's going to be done. But there were so many good, good, good comments that uh, that we ended up ended up here. Um, <clears throat> so let me see something else because to to start talking about activities, I think it's counterproductive because we are not going to get anywhere uh, with this with this today. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about using our system a little further. Um, 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 rating the activities is for the new teachers. It's an important thing to do. O also for two for two reasons. One for one for 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 the algorithm for the system to help us on this to help us see which activities need uh, need to be provide uh, improved. And the other thing to keep in mind is that you need to rate the activities to get paid for the class. OK, so your work with the class is practically done. When you gave the class, you marked the att attendance of your students, right? You marked the attendance of yourself as you attended the class. You mark the the or you evaluate assess the work of the students by using the green or red faces we are going to talk about that in a moment you need to give the stars to the activities which rates the activity itself not the work of the students that's there are, these are two different things and i'd like you to really keep in mind that <clears throat> that the stars are about the content of the activity. The red face and the green face, they are about the students' work with the activities, whether they understood it or not. It's a really important distinction. Yeah, so uh, marking the marking the attendance of teachers, students marking the or the assessing the students' uh, work, evaluating the, the activities. And then there's also a very important part, which actually ends your work with a class, sending an email to the students. This is this is this is something that is that is often overlooked, but it's also very important because students need feedback. Students like feedback. Students want feedback. Students pay 
for the feedback. I don't know if I can emphasize it more. So actually, this is this is something again we need to keep in mind that this is something what eventually will be told to them when they sign a contract. They will be told that they will receive a message after the class about the classwork. So it's very important that after each and every class, we send a message to them and, and it is in the system, right? You don't need to go to Gmail or whatever or Outlook and send them a message one by one, but you can do it in the in the in the digital classroom. Um, Rob, M Max, uh, Alison, Alistair, if you are not, if you if you don't know how to do it, please reach out to your mentor or one of us and we will show you what is the what is the way to 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 put this email together because it's it's important. Uh, Rob, you want to how how detailed should that that message be? Because very bearing good. in mind you may not have that you may not have that much time before your next lesson. So very good. It's Sometimes kind of you don't have say. zero. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. What I can say is uh, is how I work with it is I do not send the message after right after the class. I send I send the emails after the block of my classes. So say I have three, four classes in the morning. Once they are done, I go do my thing and then I come back and I send and I send the messages. To do this, I reread the chat box. I check the evaluation I do while I'm doing the class. So I see that what and I normally remember as well. So it's like I do I do it in two blocks. I send the messages at the end of the morning and I send the messages at the end, the end of the afternoon. And if I have evening classes, I send the messages at the end of the evening classes. So it's kind of like there are two ways to work, right? If you are quick enough and if you can make sure that your students are or the, the class, the class flow will not be broken by you putting together the message during the class, then you can actually send the message at the end of the class. And then it's no extra work for you. It is possible. I find for, for me, it's I, I find it I'm more relaxed if I pay attention only to the students in the classroom. And after that, after all, I in 10 minutes, if it's like four or five classes, in 10 minutes you can easily send these messages. Five, maybe, depending on the classes you have, depending on the amount of students you had in the classes as well, and uh, how detailed it should be. Uh, you are not asked to evaluate the work of each and every student. You can. There is also the possibility. So if you have two students, for example, you can send them separate messages as well. What I normally do is I send them a block about the vocabulary those words that we that they really did not understand and we we needed to clear out then i send them a block about grammar those grammar, grammar points which we discussed during the class and which were not understood and which which they had problems with and should should there be perhaps a few words about their or, or should should they need it a few words about their what, what did they do in the class? For example, if there is a person in, in class who who constantly says signs instead of sins, then I will make then I then I will then I will write a sentence about this that you remember last class you were much better with pronouncing this word, but today it was again a little bit little bit a um, little bit uh, tricky for you. Please remember that the pronunciation is this and not that. So that's it. Okay, thank you, you are you you are you are helping them remember the content of the class. That's 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 original. Originally, our system. Just a moment, Mary Carmen. Uh, originally, our system allows students to preview and review the class content before the class, after the class, for for the whole week, even for the whole month, actually. Right, and we do. I hope many of us we do tell our students that. If you have five minutes before the class, if you have five minutes in the evening, go check what we were talking about because that will help your progress. That's when you really consolidate everything what we were talking about and what we were working on. And the email reinforces this this part, right? It really helps them 
uh, helps them. It, it's how to say. Um, it's it's um, it's an it's another little sign. It's another in it's another little step what they can take on the road of progress to get to the to to where the where the actual content is consolidated when they start knowing the word or the structure. And this is this is what we are that's this is what we are helping them with. And and yes, Rob, you wanted to say something? No, no, just thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and again, remember on the other day with Thomas, we were talking about this. That remember, and Jonathan also mentioned, and many of us here today, we are providing a service, and we would like our clients to tell their friends, families, and other people about our service. That it's good, it's reliable. I have, I there is progress. They, they. They help me. They send me. They, 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 you know. So these are all small things that add, add up, to an entire service, a really full service. What we provide them with, and that's why it's really important. They expect us to send the messages. They are told that they will be receiving messages. Therefore, we need to send them the messages. I feel like an elementary school teacher. Sorry, <laughs> Mari Carmen, you wanted to add something. Yes, hi, Gergo. Hi, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to say it was really nice to see the, the new teachers participating in this Friday talk. And I just thought maybe it would be a good idea to ask Artemi, who is here with us as well, who's been oh, teaching a oh few God. classes. A few classes, and, and I think it's gone really well. I would love him to share with us uh, his experience with our teaching system. Are you there, Tony? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, hi. Hi. So uh, I also I, I already told uh, that during other meetings, so that I really like this system and I really like this platform and how it's uh, it's going on. So and also like the uh, the classes. So because I share this method of uh, this approach of teaching. And yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with everything. OK, thank you, Artemi. Oh, yes, thank you, Artemi. Uh, sorry for not including you into the, in the conversation. Um, mm, yeah, OK. Uh, ladies, gents, any question? Josie, please go ahead. I just want to add something on the whole feedback thing and this is in class and in the emails. Um, encouragement as well obviously we want to give them feedback about what they need to do and you know at the end of the day if you've taught like 10 classes or something and you're a bit like oh I can't you know just at least give them some encouragement and tell them what they did really well on in that class because you know if you receive an email and it just says something really positive mm -hmm. about what you've done that's also going to make you want to continue classes so i think it's definitely important to give feedback but i always i always say something nice in the wrap up as well because i think you know it's nice to see them like really smiley and finishing the lesson on a good note so feedback is important but encouragement definitely as well mm. and and i think we can we can all agree uh, on what Josie said is super is, is really important. Thanks, Josie, for reminding us of this the, 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 the positive feedback part. Because think about yourself when you were a student. What how did how did you feel when your teacher told you that wow you did good? Or yeah, today it was it was it it went well and so on and so on. And these 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 are these are like um, um, Powering, right? Really, it gives you boost. Like, okay, when is my next class? Let's go. And this is this is is it good for the students and it's and it's good business. Uh, it, sorry for finishing with these words, but actually, it is good business, right? S -s client customer satisfaction. That's that's the that's the cornerstone of any good business provide it. Good. So that's a that's a nice tone to finish the, the our talk with. And um, 
it was really nice to hear many of you talking, especially especially new 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 faces. And and thank you very much, everyone, that you've been participative. And and we continue next week on Friday. So enjoy your weekends and see you next week. Okay. Thanks for being thank here. You. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.